Hello everyone, this is Maki. Finally, the first Monster Hunter Wilds trailer has dropped. After watching it entirely, I was quite surprised by how this game turned out to be. It's unlike any other Monster Hunter game. I'll be sharing the reasons as to why. There's a lot to uncover from new monsters, locales, characters. Also, I'll be sharing some fascinating information outside of the trailer with you. And if that's something you'd be interested in, do stick around. I'm excited to talk all about it in this video. Starting off in the trailer, we see a sand ship sailing through the unexplored desert region. This reminds me of the opening from Monster Hunter 4, wherein we were heading towards Valhabar. We encountered a huge monster called Daren Moran. On the other hand, to some old hunters, it reminds them of the time they were hunting Jen Moran back in third gen. What I can say, it's great to see the sand ship make a return in Monster Hunter Wilds. I wonder if we're getting either of those two back, or maybe a different sand monster. Anyhow, in the next scene, we see our character, the hunter. According to the English website of Monster Hunter, we are a hunter assigned to the Forbidden Lands Research Commission. Our job is to help investigate this unexplored region. A bit of speculation, it's likely that this research commission team is different from the research commission team back in Monsanter World. Here's the logo of the Forbidden Lands Research Commission, and this is the logo of the research commission team in Monsanter World. Also, here's a great piece of information shared by Luti. Feel free to pause the video. Moreover, in the video, right beside us is our Palico and some NPCs who are also part of the expedition. This surprised me because our Palico has voice acting now. Hey, huh? One of them's got big spikes on its back. Previously, we can only hear meows and some text dialogue. I prefer it to be meows instead. Some may like it, but let me know in the comments. Afterward, we get to see two cool new characters waving back at us. As soon as we find a good spot, we can get things set up and ready to go. This is Gemma. According to the English website of Once Hunter, Gemma is our smithy. She'll be taking care of all our weapon and armor crafting needs. <laughs> it's time for speculation again. Gemma is an odd character, at least from what we can see from now. I didn't notice this the first time watching the trailer, but some people online had noticed how Gemma draws a lot of references from the characters of Monster Hunter 4. Like how Gaijin Hunter points it out, she has the goggles like Little Miss Forge. In her back pocket, we see a young Kutku plushie like the one Sophia the Guildmorm has. Her jacket has a symbol similar to the Caravaneer's outfit. Some suggest this is Little Miss Forge all grown up now. I can see the reason as to why, but we'll just have to see. And then we can get started. This is Alma. According to the English website of Mons Hunter, Alma is our handler. She'll be the one to manage our monster hunt requests, permissions, and quests. This is gonna be great! You bet. I hope we find them soon. Continuing on, we see this other character with a worried look on their face. This is Nata. We see him looking far ahead in the desert with a worried look on his face. Nata is a mysterious young boy who will accompany us on our journey. It seems like the story of Monsanter Wilds will revolve around Nata's backstory. Gemma even mentions finding them. I hope we find them soon. Who's them? Is it Nata's family? Of course, this is just the first trailer. We have yet to see what the story is all about. I really hope that the story is compelling enough for people to care about. I can see in each Monsanter game how they're making some improvements in the story. Especially in Sunbreak, they've done a good job, but I really think they can do even better, so I do hope they nail it in this game. <gasps> the next thing we see is we're about to enter an unexplored locale called Windward Plains. Incredible! I've never heard of a Karatnoth heard this big before! It's been said that Windward Plains takes place in the Forbidden Lands. It's odd to think about these so-called Forbidden Lands. Where is this? 
Is it part of the new world? Or part of the old world map of Mons Hunter? I wish they gave us an updated version of the Mons Hunter map. It's been a long time already. What we know so far is that Windward Plains holds a wide variety of natural wonders from sandy deserts, swaying grasslands, and twisted rock formations and so on. Besides that, we also get to see how the environment dynamically changes while hunting or exploring the area. There's a time wherein the locale is vibrant and brimming with life, all of the monsters are out exploring, everything is thriving, there's also a time wherein the locale becomes harsh and unforgiving, where monsters fight for limited resources, fewer monsters are out in the wild. This alone excites me already. It reminds me of the season's mechanic in Mons Hunter 2, and if they do emphasize this in their videos and on their website, I can already see how this Mons Hunter game will be a whole different experience from any of the previous Mons Hunter games. Moving on, while exploring this locale, what we have here is our trusty new mount. This creature is called Sacred. Sacred? Like, secret? It's an animal mount whose exceptionally agility will provide the hunter with crucial support out on hunts. Its well-developed sense of smell allows it to guide you automatically to your current objective or any location you select on the map. We already saw what this mount is capable of back in the teaser video of Mons Hunter Wilds. The creature can sprint away from dire situations, it can easily navigate through rough terrain, and it can also glide through the air. This creature is amazing. By the way, apparently from what I've read online in one of the community discussions on Twitter, I hope this is true, but the name Sacred is actually a pun. Similar to our other companions in Mons Hunter, like Palico. Pal means a friend, and Lico meaning Calico, a cap, and Palamute. Pal means a friend, and a mute, which I believe is an Alaskan Malamute, a breed of dog. Anyhow, sacred. In Chinese, it's a combination of two words, secretary bird and camping. It's roughly translated as secretary bird wyvern or secretary bird dragon. Another note to mention, according to the English website of Mons Hunter, sacred isn't just for travel. We can also stash an extra weapon in its weapon sling which allows us to switch between two weapons of our choice while out on hunts. This is great. We no longer have to run back to our camp only to switch weapons. This is going to be a seamless experience, an uninterrupted hunt. Speaking of weapons, fortunately we still have the 14 iconic weapon types. Funny enough, early on their website, it was only 13. But they were quick to update the mistake, so so yes, we all have the weapons again. Going back to the trailer video, in the Windward Plains, we also encounter herds of small monsters and large monsters in the area. The first large monster we get to see is called Doshaguma. It's a rugged territorial fanged beast that exhibit an aggressive disposition and inhabit a large range, sometimes observed in large packs. This monster looks ugly, and I like it. It reminds me of Goss Harag in Mons Hunter Rise. Actually, Goss Harag's concept art looks like Dosha Guma. I love what they show in this next part. I've been dreaming of having this kind of experience in Mons Hunter again. In the trailer, you can see that we are hiding from this large monster. After a while, we can see our hunter trying to lead the monster away from the pack since it's too dangerous to hunt them all together at once. While trying to lead the monster away, we can see our hunter using the hook slinger to grab some rocks and use it again to shoot one of the rocks for it to fall off in one of the monsters. I like how they kept the slinger from Mons Hunter World and added a bit of functionality like the hook slinger. For those who are unaware, the slinger returns as an indispensable hunter tool. We use it to fire rocks, seeds, and other natural ammo, or even use it to trigger other objects in the environment. And this new one, hook slinger, 
The Hulk Slinger is the newest evolution of the Slinger, allowing us to gather all types of materials from a distance and it can be used while mounted on a sacred and can be even used to interact with certain environmental objects or trigger traps. Moving on, from the distance, we see a sandstorm coming in our way. Our vision gets obstructed and some of the large monsters were caught off guard by the environmental hazard. One of the monsters was fortunate enough to survive and hastily attacked our hunter. We begin to hunt the monster as ordered by the guild. This one is quite odd. According to the English PlayStation blog, it says, When we encounter a large monster while out exploring a locale, we'll be able to begin that quest seamlessly, allowing for deeper immersion. I really like this idea, we no longer have to run back to our camp and meet up with our handler only to begin the quest. It's much more seamless now. I wonder if it will always be like this. Maybe we still have the old quest system, but we'll have to see. Furthermore, another large monster was introduced to us. This monster is called Chatacabra, a large species of amphibians that use the adhesive quality of their saliva to affix stone to their forelimbs in order to power up their attacks. It's nice to see another amphibian monster. I think this monster will serve as like a beginner monster or like a teacher monster to some hunters who are quite new to the series. Moving on, in this next scene, we can see our hunter attacking the monster. Unfortunately, our hunter trips from the tongue attack or rather the saliva. The monster's body looks durable and moves quickly too. I really like this next part. We get to see the large monster get attacked by other smaller monsters in the area giving us a bit of an opportunity to plan our next move. My goodness, finally, they managed to give the small monster some spotlight unlike back then, wherein we barely get any interaction from them, so I'm glad they added this to the game. Also, while facing off the herd of Toshaguma, like I mentioned a while ago with our mount, we can see our hunter switching from one weapon to another, this is definitely a game-changing experience when it comes to hunting monsters. We also get to see some new movesets from the Greatsword weapon. I love this weapon so much and everything about it is amazing. I just can't wait to main this weapon again. <clears throat> Excuse me. In Monster Hunter Wilds, there's also this thing called Focus Mode. Similarly with the greatsword and heavy bow gun, the rest of the weapons will also have this new mechanic bringing new movesets for us to try out. According to the English PlayStation blog, in focus mode, hunters will have more precise control over how they guard, aim, and attack in order to target a monster's weak spot for big damage. Focus mode makes it easier to adjust your distance to the monster and aim your attacks making a distinctive monster hunter hunting action more accessible to a wider variety of players. Huh, <sighs> quite a mouthful. This was explained more in detail in the Japanese version of the blog. Unfortunately, at the time of this recording, these lines were deleted. Probably they wanted to go in greater detail in the next trailer. I used the Wayback Machine to find it again. Also, take this information as a grain of salt. It's a rough translation. Okay, basically, there's this mechanic called Wound. Whenever we repeatedly hit the specific parts of the monster, it will create some wounds. These wounds will gradually have stages and make them temporary weak spots for the monsters. These wounds will glow in red. Like as we can see, there are these scout flies flying over the wound. In focus mode, we are able to better pinpoint the monster's weak spots like the wound. Whenever we hit the monster's wounds or weak spots that are glowing in red, we deal more damage. We also get to do some new movesets for the weapon. We can see this in action in the trailer. Besides the follow-up or new attack, it could also be a guard or a parry, like what we see in the trailer. When guarding against some monster attacks, we get this sort of dynamic battle. Not sure what they mean by that, I assume it's similar to the mounting system. I'm curious to know what this looks like during multiplayer. It reminds me of the cutscene in Monster Hunter 2. The Greatsword Hunter is guarding against a monster and the other hunter using the hammer whacked the distracted monster. And 
My goodness, I can't wait to see how this all works. Lastly, we get to see another character. This character looks just like the Ace Lancer from Monster Hunter 4. I speculate it's him, but we'll just have to see. And to wrap it all up, if you've played Monster Hunter World and Iceborne, we get these Palico armor and weapon bonuses, which I think it looks neat. Okay, this has been a great surprise from the Monster Hunter team. I'm really excited to play this game soon. They have a lot more to share in the Summer Game Fest, so stay tuned to that announcement. They'll be revealing a completely new monster. Do you think it's the flagship monster? We'll have to see. That's all I got for now. Let me know what you think about the trailer. Check out my previous video as I speculate what they're planning to do for Monster Hunter Wilds and why this is the Monster Hunter game they aspire to be. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.